There are a few reasons why you'd want to use stabilized tracking, and a shot like this with crazy motion at high speed with a lot of movement between each frame is the main reason. So if we take a look at this shoe and we're trying to track this, there is a huge difference in distance and angle between each of these frames. If you're using a lower accuracy tracking mode, the point just might get completely lost depending on how far and how fast that's moving. So let's try that. Okay, not one of our proudest moments as a tracking developer to see that happen, but it can happen when there's crazy erratic motion because when, when we build these tracking algorithms, it's based on the most common types of movement in a shot, which is usually significantly slower in shorter distances. So we're going to have a shorter tracking scale reach that's not going to look quite far enough sometimes to find the texture. Now we could crank this up and increase the pixel reach, but let's actually take a look at how we would deal with this if we couldn't change the tracking mode. So the first thing to do would be to move through the shot and make some adjustments on your object. So we'll just say that this object is the shoe. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just keeping an eye on it. Not really putting too much effort into making these accurate. This will all make sense in just a moment. Now I'm just keeping this point selected and going through and moving it to attach loosely to the shoe. And I'm going to press track all. All right, so selecting this point, this isn't the world's greatest track, but it is attached to the shoe now that we gave it enough information and enough adjustment keyframes that it knows where it's trying to go. But this would be a pain if we had to do this with every point, right? So this is where stabilized tracking comes in. Let's frame up the object using some expansion points and make a mesh around it. So I'm using control, alt, shift, and click. And that's creating expansion points, command, alt, shift, and click on Mac. Then we can auto triangulate to make a mesh. And right now these points don't move, so that's no good. We need to turn on interpolation. So interpolation is just gonna make it so the untracked points, these ones that are locked and never allowed to track, follow along with the existing living points that are tracked, which are the light blue ones. So let's just see, maybe we actually want to kind of expand this area here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete keyframes right. And let's just keep this area large. So that way the shoe is framed up the entire time. So now we can move into the stabilized tracking tab and this is where the magic happens. Uh, this point here, that's at the center of the mesh, the one that we had just tracked. Let's watch this and see how accurately it's following this logo. Not the best, not the worst. But now that we're in the stabilized tracking tab, I'm going to delete this and now I'm going to create a new point. Now this shoe is being held almost completely still with the exception of that first jitter. But over here from about this frame on, it's mostly being held still. So I'm going to create an adjustment to get us through the chaos that happened on these first few frames like this. And now with only these two adjustments, I'm going to press track all and see what happens. Keeping in mind that in the stabilized tracking tab, we're not going back to the original footage with the crazy motion to track. We're actually stabilizing the footage and then tracking it when it's still, which should make it easier for our shorter tracking scale to deal with. Just selecting this so it's more visible. And you can see this is doing a better job than the other one with only those two points there. And then again, I'll probably just make an adjustment and move that back to where it's supposed to be. Check on it a couple of times, wherever. Uh, not super important. Now this shoe is rotating and that's a problem. So this is also where stabilized tracking excels. This is exactly what it was made for. Let's take a look at the tip of the shoe here. And I'm going to create a point there. And let's just kind of visually follow it as we go. Well, it's a little bit difficult to do, but you can see close enough, there's the point there. Maybe it's there too. And now we've just created three adjustment points. And this point is going to be a bit easier to track in the stabilized view because it's not moving around as much. So let's track that. All right, and scrubbing along, you can see that tracks kind of okay, not perfect. So how do we make this easier to deal with so the shoe isn't flopping and rotating all around? Let's go back into our main tracking tab here. We can clear the mesh. We can auto triangulate the mesh. Let's see how this is moving now. Actually, we may just want to compensate by framing up the foot a little bit better. It looks like these guys moved around. Maybe it might be easiest to just delete these expansion points entirely. 
and let's just create some far reaching expansion points out here and auto triangulate so it's all part of the mesh. And now this is gonna be fun when we go back into the stabilized tracking tab. Actually, let's do this, uh, let's make this flat. So this is a good frame for it. We're going to press set lockdown mesh UV frame and that's just going to use this frame here as the stabilized frame. And that's gonna be just a little bit easier to see and deal with. So now when we scrub, see how this is being held mostly still and we're compensating for the rotation. So now when we go to correct this point, let's just go ahead and move that there. And then moving along, correcting that there. You can see that now this is being held still, it's much easier for our human eyes to make some corrections. All right, and once again, let's press track all. So now this point is tracking pretty well, but it's still a tiny bit nauseating because the last time we tracked it, it wasn't perfect. We have a shortcut to update this motion. It's just this button here, reapply interpolation. So make a mental note before I press the button, watch this point. If I place this, let's say, see how it's kind of overlapping this, uh, this stop button? You'll see that this is moving left and right and it's going all around now, right? So relative to the UI, this thing is moving a lot. Once I press this reapply interpolation, it's going to restabilize on all the points. And now when I scrub, you'll see that this is completely locked down. So much pun intended. Okay, so scrubbing along now, now this whole shot is much more still. And you can see all the rest of the shoe is going to be easier to track because we've manually tracked these two points, which really wasn't a lot of work. I was mostly talking through it. Now this whole mesh has been stabilized based on these two points and adding more should be pretty easy. So I'm just going to add a point here and another point there and there and there and there, maybe there. And let's just see what happens when we press track all. Scrubbing along, those points are actually tracking really well with very minimal effort. This point looks terrible. We're just gonna delete that one, that's fine. But I guess we could just manually fix that. So again, I hate to really highlight the failures of my tracking software, but it is what it is. And I just want to show that this tool of stabilized tracking is a very easy way where if you have a difficult to track object, to track just one or two points and make the rest of the object not difficult to track. So what I'm gonna do is just for comparison's sake, remember each of these points, we placed a point on the first frame and we tracked forward and they did a very good job following, right? A little bit of drift here and there, not bad. This is the kind of thing that we could fix just by quickly dragging that back into place, maybe two adjustments on each. Just for example sake, I'm gonna go back into the tracking tab and this is going to hurt my soul a little bit when I do it, but I'm gonna take these five points, delete keyframes right, and let's just watch them track in this view. They get lost and they just can't do it. Actually, maybe one or two of them did. Okay, so anyway, undoing. Moving back, that is the point of the stabilized tracking tab is that you essentially give the software a hint of the object that you're trying to track, then it uses that object's motion to stabilize and focus on that motion when it's tracking in the stabilized tracking tab. Again, if we want to stabilize this even further, coming back into the main tab, clear the mesh, auto triangulate the mesh, and then when we come back into the stabilized tracking tab again, now it's being held even more still. So again, I'm scrubbing through this very quickly. Let's take a look at this point, scrub through this really fast, and then I can make a correction. It's still kind of floating off set, that's fine. We press reapply interpolation, and now that's being held very still there. Make that little correction there, little correction there, reapply interpolation. Or perhaps just retrack again. And then I can go through with each of these points and just try to make a mental note of where they were when I created them and nudge that there. This point, let's see where was this one. It's right on that corner. Put that there. This one we've already adjusted. Now, mind you, at the speed that this thing is moving, you would probably never see any issues with the track here. We're talking a couple of pixels off and even then it's finding its way back to its motion 
while this foot is just whipping across the screen, right? So if you were to look at these tracking markers here in this context, and you're playing this back in real time, we probably wouldn't even have to make those adjustments. But this is a professional tracking application and we are going to show how to make it perfect. So there you go. And then this point, didn't mean to do that. So each time we properly track a point, the shot is going to get a little bit more stable and it's going to be easier to add more new points. To finish this shot, what I would probably do is take these points here and I would just make some expansion points a bit closer. And let's take a look looking pretty good. I mean, you can imagine that, especially in the mesh points that are between any three given points like here, this is gonna track really, really well. Another thing to point out is that you probably don't actually have to track because these points are being interpolated to follow these living points. So for example sake here, Again, trying, not trying to confuse you, but you know, it happens. If we have this point that's moving and we were to create a point and not track with it, actually let's keep that selected and move, you can see it's being connected to this point and that point. And it's mostly moving along following the motion of those two points. So when we go into the stabilized tracking tab, if you know tracking is taking a while, if it's a really long shot, actually let's make sure to have that point selected and on a frame where there's an adjustment so we can see it. You probably don't even have to actually track. You can just kind of move through the shot, make a couple of adjustments. And whether or not you press track all or not, there would probably be diminishing returns because it's already mostly moving along with the points around it. Okay, on time lapse, I'm just gonna add like three more points and just absolutely whip through this so we can see a more final result. Okay, good enough. I'm not even gonna bother pressing track all just to prove the point when this is in motion that these are interpolating well enough that it's probably gonna look completely fine. So we'll zoom out. That is following pretty well. Wasn't too difficult to do and we probably tracked it much more accurately than we needed to. We'll press lockdown. I'll just put something on here. Some sort of logo that I guess we would want to be putting on this shoe. Absolutely beautiful work. Actually, we'll just multiply that just because. move through we'll see that's on there pretty good and the last thing is maybe adding some motion blur in the composition settings just making sure that the shutter phase is negative half of the shutter angle goes a long way taking a guess at whatever the shutter angle might have been on here to get a similar blur to what we're seeing on the shoe. And I actually think it's good that this is moving through frame by frame a little bit slow so you can see it. So that is a quick look at stabilized tracking and how to use it. Hopefully it's useful for you in any shots where there's really fast motion, just track one or two, stabilize, and then it makes the shot easy. All right, one last example. We're going to take this shot with this horse here and we're going to very quickly do the same process. I think sometimes it just helps to see it start to finish, but with a little bit less of me talking and explaining. We're going to track one single point. And then of course that's a little bit difficult to follow. 
We'll create some expansion points. Auto triangulate, turn on interpolation, move it in the stabilized tracking tab. And now this is being held still. We're going to find a point far away, somewhere here that helps represent the whole object. And we'll track that. If you're wondering why it's skipping frames, it's just batch processing. It does a couple frames at a time. And now of course, it's still moving a little bit too fast where it's comfortable to view with the human eye. So we would go back to our tracking tab, clear the mesh, auto triangulate, and now this will be contributed to the mesh. And these should update their interpolation. You can always just double check by selecting them and going to interpolated frame. There it is. Then when we move back in a stabilized tracking tab, now that face is being held still really well. And at this point, uh, I'm probably not even gonna bother making adjustments. I'll just add a couple here and there. And I'll hope that because we've stabilized those two, now the track is going to be much easier because we're tracking on top of this stabilized image and not on top of this more erratic, bouncing up and down, difficult to see image. I'll press track all. Let's scrub through and you can see these actually tracked pretty well. Well, maybe not this one. This one uh, got attacked by that little band there, I think. Yeah, I like that. So we would probably just set that to not trackable from here forward. That is okay. And then in the tracking tab, again, clear the mesh, auto triangulate, stabilize tracking tab again. And let's reapply the interpolation. That way this point here is mostly following along. And now when we go back into the stabilize tracking tab, you can see everything is being held much more still. And this is where we would start to make our final adjustments on any of these points. You can actually see that the center of the face is really, really held still here. And we might make some little minor adjustments down to wherever this seems to be going off. And you just continue this process until the whole face is being held completely still. Thanks for watching.